show. You know, I actually believe. Hey, yeah, six- hey, hey, hey uh, just so you know, Hopkins, I just hit record. Okay, that's fine. All right, so what were you going to say? I was going to say, I actually believe SIG made 2000 when they submitted it. At this point, I really do. Okay. I'm just saying I think they actually did. There's a lot of them out there available now. Huh. Well, look, Mimi is here. <laughs> can you hear? Of course I can hear. That little fucker never shuts up. <laughs> hey, Ben. I'm having issues. Oh, why we didn't intro. It's the Practical no. Pistol Show, everybody. <laughs> now Matt and Nick say hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Hey, hey, Ben, I'm having issues with grip after a reload. Seems after every reload, I bring my weak hand up maybe too fast, and when I grip the gun, it's just not locked in, and I just fucking shoot anyways. And I really think when I run a stage about my grip and how the gun is fitting in my hands, I just run the stage like I'm in a rush. Is there a way to fix this? Something specific to work on in dry fire? I'm just a C-class production shooter, but started dry fire five days a week for 30 minutes after getting my ass kicked in a state match. I'm looking for B-class in the next three months. Uh, love the podcast. Listen every day. Thanks, guys. Um, Matt, this is one of those questions that you don't like, isn't it? It's hard to... He's, he's not re-gripping it. the gun after a reload, right? Yeah. So what should he practice? Gripping the gun after a reload. <laughs> no, it's, hey, I hate it. Like, I don't hate it. But it's hard to diagnose like when you can't see someone doing it. But the obvious question is grip it better, right? Obvious or answer is obvious. It. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm sure you have something better or Nick has something better maybe it helps. I usually do have something better than that. But I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. save it until I'm gonna save it till Nick goes. <laughs> well, first of all, um, it seems like you know, two completely different issues. I don't know if you're drawing a connection between them or if it's two separate questions, but if you're not gripping the gun right after reload, you know, like Matt said, I don't know what, what else to tell you except dry fire reloads and getting your grip right. If you're shooting stages um, in a rushed fashion, you know, I, I'd say that's a completely separate question and probably, you know, more of a practice, overall practice and mental thing that you need to kind of fix up. So, are we dealing with two two questions here? I guess. I don't know. Um, I, I don't, didn't even. I don't think see so. That question. Is it? I think I we think can he's do saying, it also. I think he's saying he does it on stages too. Or because he's in a rush, he misgrips it. Maybe. Mm-hmm. That could be. Well, I I have a thought here, guys. Right, that I'd yeah, like to share. So uh, a lot of times when people are practicing reloads. I think they're doing like uh, YouTube style reloads. Does that sound reasonable? <laughs> like standing in one spot, just trying to bang out a super fast load. As long as it, long as it looks good on YouTube, it must be good, right? <clears throat> well, we've we've all done it. I think maybe maybe Matt's done it the least, but we've all done it at least some. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a little I'm a little bit responsible for helping popularize this. Um, a little bit, but. If you're, if you're running a drill like that two shots, reload two shots thing at, at five or seven yards, I mean, I, I, I think the core idea here is what people get really obsessed with when they're reloading is the time, you know? So I, I, I remember this and I still, I still like, I like me a fast reload. Don't get me wrong. But I remember early on, it was all like, well, you got to, you know, try to reload in under a second or, you know, try to do it really fast. So then so much of our practice, both dry fire and live fire, is banging out those fast reloads when you're standing still. And it is so tempting, especially at close range, to cheat on that, where you you slam the magazine in the gun and you push the the gun back on target and you don't even really re-grip the gun too much and you start ripping shots off. I mean, I watch people do this a lot when they're trying to get that fast reload. Um, so on the timer, you'll, you'll get a faster time if you don't really regrip the gun, but, mm-hmm. and on the target, it's kind of like a crapshoot, right? Well, for two shots, you don't need to. Right. Exactly. So if that's the way, if that's the style of training that this guy's doing, 
uh, as I, I would strongly suspect that it is, um, he should take away the timer, uh, dry fire on longer targets, or or uh, put in movements into his reloads. If you have the, uh, let me grab it here. Here's a copy of Dry Fire Reloaded. If you have this, it's awesome. Like Wilbur got on this one. Check it out. He like chewed up the shit out of the cover. Nice. Oh, he's such an asshole. Anyway, he wrecked my goddamn VR headset. Did I tell you guys that? What? Yeah, he chewed the uh, HDMI cable. He must cable. be super cute to keep him around. I, I said if he fucks up one other thing, I'm going to kill him. Um, <laughs> it'll be a $40 shot. But he chewed the HDMI cable up on my PSVR headset. He didn't, he didn't get the vibe, but he got the PSVR. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Can you replace it? Yeah. It's mostly just annoying. <laughs> Any, anyway, if you, anyway, if you have the Dry Fire Reloaded book, um, there's a couple drills in there where it's like you're move, doing a quick move from spot to spot as you reload. Or if you're kind of stepping across a, a stick or something on the floor uh, as you reload, you're doing that repeatedly. That more mirrors what you're going to do in a match. Um, so you might want to switch up some of your practice to that sort of stuff instead of uh, close range, high speed uh, sort of reloading where you're just throwing the mag in the gun and trying to stop the clock as fast as you can. Does that make sense, guys? That's yeah, it really does. Yeah. So you think he's just basically paying too much, putting too much weight on the timer and needs to, to back off and just put a little more weight on the mechanical accuracy of what he's doing and, and, you know, make prioritize that for a little while. Yeah. And that, that recognize that, uh, if I'm practicing at five yards, I don't know what a good reload time would be, you know, under a second would be pretty good, I guess. But if you're practicing, if there's nothing wrong with sh doing reloads at 15 yards, instead, you know, doing your live fire practice, uh, I do doing that all it the time. At, yeah, doing it at 15 yards and a, a fast time there for for you, Nick, would be like 1.3, 1.4. That'd be pretty good. You yeah. look at that, be like, that's a good time. It's not under a second, but it's not going to be because you, at that distance, you know, you have to aim a little bit harder. Uh, of course, you'll get you'll get punished pretty bad if you're not regripping the gun. So it could be as simple as just changing up the distance to the target. You know? uh, yeah, what about adding targets in, like instead of having just two shots after it, you have to shoot an eight-shot array or something? Yeah, so that's what that's doing is going to keep him more honest about his grip. Yeah. Okay? But really just the mindset that he's always, that he's always working on the speed of the reload, it's not, it's not really about that. You know, you got to be able to consistently throw a magazine in the gun and regrip it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't really have to be crazy fast. So that's my take on it. Anyway. Anybody have anything to add to that one? No? no I think that was no, pretty good. good. Yeah. It's fantastic. All right. I'm wondering this will be good for you, Nick. I'm I was wondering what focus you use to shoot plate racks. I've been working dry fire all winter from your book. And have made huge, there are huge gains both in live fire and dry fire. I can hit the part times cold in most of the drills, including the transition drills. Something about a uh, plate rack drill, I can only get down to 2.2 seconds. Par is too flat freestyle. Hitting 2.2 is terrible sight picture. I can run build drills and plate drills in 1.6. It's not trigger speed because I know USPSA is all about the splits, right? Oh, he's making a joke there. Uh -huh. Come on, it is all about the splits. Dude, of course. I tell people in all my classes, fast splits make wet pussies. That's right. It's not true at all. <laughs> but it uh, usually, usually, I don't, that's the one that doesn't even get a laugh. People just look at you weird. Anyway, I consistently outrun the sight picture with the trigger, but when I slow the finger down and see what I need to see to get hits, I can't get back below 2.4. Extra info for the merry band of ballers. I grip the gun hard and dry fire to get a sight tracking in live fire. I thought I know. Oh, though I know I'm faster in dry fire by being looser slightly. So he's saying he's not gripping the gun quite properly for this either. 
Um, okay. So the 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 question at the I know it's that that was just indecipherable gibberish for most people for most people, but the the question at the front of it was, what focus do you use when you shoot plate racks? And uh, Nick, you will say that's extremely distance dependent, right? Yeah. So I was I was going to say I don't know why you said it would be my question because my personally my plate rack shooting has been consistently bad for a long time. Hey, but then it's consistent. Yeah, <laughs> it is consistent. Um, so yeah, my first question is: Are we talking like seven yards or ten yards? Because that's like the numbers he's talking about sound very strong for me at, at ten. I'll say that. Now, I don't know if that two point four is he shooting that in live fire? I mean, no, these are dry fire times. These are all dry fires, even the two point four. Okay, so you know, my for me personally, and I'm not saying this applies to everybody, but for me, dry fire and plate rack is kind of a waste of time you know i can pretend i saw a good sight picture on all those plates and then if i go out and actually live fire that sucker my time is, is going to be totally different so you know i would say spend a little time shooting in live fire learn what you you know what what you kind of have to see there and then know where your limit is and then you know kind of stick to that and try to push a little dry fire but you're not you know if you go out and shoot a plate rack in 2.2 seconds or even 2.4 in my opinion. It's you know, that's pretty actually. strong. It's pretty strong. So that's a world you know, record. If you're yeah. if your dry fire time in this case is like so much stronger than than what you're doing live fire, in my, you know what are you doing? How are you getting that time down? Well, you're cheating the sight picture. Is that a good thing? Is that a good habit to develop? I don't think so. Um, so you know, all this dry fire talk is great. I would say go shoot a live fire and see where you're really at. Uh Okay, I would say that I've since backed down these times. I, th I think for... Let me bust out the... I mean, the only really way to speed it up is the transition from the plate to the site. Well, to the next plate, right? In tr so I've, I've changed the freestyle par time to 2.3 seconds from 2. Because 2 was uh, too much for most people. And where you, where you speed up a lot in dry fire... Uh, especially is on your draw if you can nail a fast draw but if we're if you're doing like seven or ten yards i'm going to be target focused primarily myself uh, as soon as you start to back up beyond that then you start really having to get on the front side hard so just the idea here that he's you're going to be hard front sight focused as you run a plate rack in two seconds like that's not going to happen i don't think yeah, and that may be why I'm slow because at 10, I am mostly front side focused. And if I try to go target focus, I'm, you know, my, my consistency in hitting the plates drops off. Yeah, I actually agree sure. with Nick on that one. You know, like I, I said, seven is maybe a totally different. Yeah. Seven may be a different story. Sorry, go ahead. If I'm, a, if I'm like not target focused but sight focused, I'm faster anyway. But I don't super like train on a plate rack like hardly ever. So maybe it's just an experience with it. <laughs> yeah, I shoot a couple. You know, I, I don't spend hundreds of rounds on plate racks, but I we got one where I practice. So you know, once every other session, I'll go over there and shoot three or four runs or whatever. That's about how much I oh, shoot. I don't even have that access. What? We don't have a plate rack. Hmm. I have to drive for quite a ways to get to a plate rack, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I don't shoot them that much. They're kind of fun, but it's just, I don't know, it's not that interesting to me. Yeah, I, okay. I agree with that. That's why, I, you know, that's why I've never really spent a lot of time really focusing on trying to get the time down on a plate rack. But from what I can tell where I lose, I lose some time everywhere, but I really get hammered on the draw, personally. From what I can see, a very top guy shooting them. Yeah, like in live fire at, at ten yards or something, it's you're going to be well under a second for a draw. Yeah, well, I'm. Yeah, see, my my ten yard draw on that with that to hit consistently is no, more like one point. Man, I'm two. talking like to do YouTube runs on plate racks. Yeah, you're going to be under a second. <laughs> yeah, at that's 10 true. Yards, that's for sure. Yeah. So that that's where I personally lose the the bulk of the time is on a draw, but. Matt, you'd be amazed what you can do if you take 500 rounds out and shoot it all on a plate rack. 
at the end of like just one run out of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like editing <laughs> stuff, like you could look pretty cool. <laughs> so you you shoot five hundred rounds, you edit the the six best shots together, or whatever. Yeah, I, have, I haven't good. done that. I haven't done that in years, but yes, you can do that if you want. To, if you're interested in that sort of a thing. Man. Well, guys, sure as shit, another bang up podcast. I almost feel like we need more banter. <laughs> more banter. What are you drinking? Like, like it's two pretty good, like serious questions on podcast. Though. So I'm switching. This is pure leaf, uh, unsweetened tea. So I'm trying to drink less carbonated uh, soda with aspartame. I'm not really sure why I'm doing that. But it I thought like you already drank idea. the like non carbonated like non carbonated monsters and stuff. I drink the shit out those, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know why it seems like a good idea, but it just does. I don't. <laughs> I don't even like the way this this garbage tastes. Not at all. It's not very well, good. What, what was your what was your monster intake before? My monster. Oh, my monster intake is uh, suicidal. Is what it is. <laughs> Like, what are we talking, 10, 10 a day? No, it's not that much. Okay. I have it's, a neighbor who would, like, try to tries to get off of Dr. Pepper, like, every or diet Dr. Pepper every six months. And I was, I'm like, just stop drinking them. Like, how hard is it? And then I finally figured out she's drinking eight to ten of them every day. I'm like, okay, that's Eight to it. ten Dr. Peppers? <laughs> Do, like, diet Dr. Peppers, eight that's to ten not, every like, day. That, to me, that's not high intake for me. <laughs> okay, that's what I was saying. Like, what's your monster intake? My well, it's not monster. That's my problem. I'll drink one or two monsters in a normal day, three if I'm on a hot shooting range, with like, and that's always the tea based monster. Like, if I'm outside, yeah. I prefer the tea based monster. I don't drink a whole lot of the carbonated monster unless it's a colder day, usually. But like, <laughs> right. people have seen me like with Diet Mountain Dews. Like, I got one of those in my hand like all day. All day long, I got that shit in my hand. So that's what I'm trying to get away from. All right. So Diet Mountain Dew and Monster are, prob in my opinion, pr well, not too far apart. Like, they're pretty similar, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. They can't be that different. I got on this uh, Redline stuff. Some guy down uh, in South Florida got me drinking this shit. Do you like it, Matt? I haven't tried it yet. I'm afraid to, actually. Dude, it's terrifying. I was, exactly what you said, dude. I was babbling like a retard the first time I drank it. It was awesome. That makes me nervous, actually. should make is me it, nervous. Is it just all caffeine? I guess it is. I don't know what it is. Or is it one of those Four loco caffeinated super it's, alcoholic? It looks like, it's like a five-hour energy shot, but I think there's something else in there. Yeah, you, you like unleash, un, unleash the beast with that stuff. It's monsters. So. Logo. I've never even seen Redline anywhere. But now, uh, it's now like, dude, I will look. It's like Walgreens. The dude who got me to start using this stuff to refer to it as using it. Like, I don't <laughs> use this that much. Like it was a bad thing or a drug? Like it's like a, a drug. Like a drug. Nice. <laughs> yeah. He's, I'm back on it. You know, fell yeah, off the no, wagon. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. shit's pretty intense for, you know, over the counter stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, folks, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, that's it for us today. If you have a shooting question you'd like the answer to, go to bensteiger.com. Send us your questions. We'd love to hear them. Or at least, you know, I'd love to hear them. Hopkins will probably shit on them and say you're stupid. I didn't shit on either one of these, did I? No. I'll try right. harder. You're saving, you're saving your shit on stuff for Troy. <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his head. <laughs> Triggered. Hey, the the, yeah. the the Fawbush podcast is up now. How is how's it going? I don't know. I think a, I think a lot of people listen to it. Let me check. Uh, T Rex Arms might be a good dude to get on. Why is he interesting? Yeah, it'd be kind of the same. Are we live? Yes, we're still live. You don't have to. Okay. <laughs> it'd be okay. a good podcast. Yeah. I think Fawbush made for a good goddamn podcast. Quantic and Heron. Oh, Tim dropped that podcast today. You do it a day early. No, you did it. The, it's Thursday, right? Oh, that's okay. the correct day. 
whatever. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording this garbage.